Welcome to the PMA LCS Gold Division Week 3 matchup between Literal Team Name and Season 10. I hardly know her. I am your host and play by play caster, Sean Minmung Shannon, joined by Grant Slaga McPollin. How is it going, Slaga? Uh, it's going really well. I'm uh, really excited to cast this match tonight and uh, ready to see some good quality League of Legends. Yeah, I'm really, really interested. This does feature uh, LTN, Literal Team Name, who is currently at the bottom of the standings in terms of a win-loss record uh, for uh, the gold division with season 10 I hardly know her being the only undefeated team left in the gold division so kind of a David versus Goliath matchup here uh, on our hands for us tonight yeah I'm actually really excited to see how these guys match up because there's a lot of not very different skill gaps in my opinion but it seems like we're getting into pick ban anyway. So yeah. pick ban uh, is gonna be the Alawi ban right there from season ten focused over there at literally Kamish in the top lane. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Uh his Alawi is actually insane. He's been able to turn matches for multiple seasons now and then quickly followed after his uh Freedom Penguins Caitlin, which is not a surprise at all. He's been a main for that champion for many years and has complete mastery of it. Yeah, I do agree. It is something that has been comfort for him, and when he does get it, if it isn't banned away, he does tend to carry on it. Uh, looks like a Syndra hover here. You know, we do talk about hovers here at the PMA LCS, because why not? Um, <laughs> but it's going to be locked in. I guess it's going to be focused at uh, literally Nate there in the mid lane, as the Morgana is also being banned away. Yeah, that one was just snapped away instantly. LTN does not want to deal with that tonight. Yeah, and uh, Morgana is a Find Me Alpha LCS special. If you're first time joining us, thank welcome. This is the Find Me Alpha LCS. We are uh, we're over under eight kills for Near the Steel. I think it's going to be even. I'm going to take the under on that one, depending on his champion pick. But we got Misfortune and Warwick's band. So the Misfortune also targeted at Freedom Penguin and Warwick targeted at Neil the Steel. Uh, the aforementioned Neil the Steel, who is now their new jungler. And the Aphilios hover most likely lock in for Freedom Penguin right here, getting the one of the top three AD carries uh, on this new patch that we're on 10.2. Uh, some love for their carry in the bot lane, Freedom Penguin. Yeah, and this uh, doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Aphelios has been picked twice already by the side of uh, S10. It just seems to be a pretty solid fallback, especially with the power that Aphelios has been showing. However, one thing that hasn't been touched on is that Aphelios has been slightly nerfed in this upcoming patch because we are playing on patch 10.2. So let's see if this actually shows up in the play and see if they're well equipped to kind of deal with this little shift in power. But on the side of LTN, we're seeing a Sejuani and Nami, which means just clear disengage, clear engage for coming from their team. They know exactly what they want to do right now, and they're kind of hiding that kind of carry-esque. But Neil the Steel is going on to his signature cane. And that is going to be quite an interesting pick to see because I, I'm i not too sure about Kane's prevalence in the meta right now, but uh, Neil has seen just some incredible games on it. Yeah, I do think it's a little bit interesting that you know that it is one of the champions that he does play, and then you've locked in the jungle Sejuani, and Kane is notoriously good into Sejuani. Um uh, especially when you want to farm that Rost. Uh, but the Blitzcrank is a little bit interesting for me. I do think it is a champion that has been played, and I think this will actually be the first repeat um, uh, jungler for Neil the Steel, and we have seen Blitzcrank once from uh, our, our Revan, uh, Revan's uh, right here. So... Let's crank a little bit interesting, but into the Nami find. So both bot laners and junglers being picked. So these solo laners are going to be banned out. The Ziggs and Mordekaiser are being really just snapped in, locked in. Little team name knowing exactly what they want to take away. And Talon being taken away uh, for the side of by the side of S10 on to literally Nate, who has had some pop up performances. And you know Talon's just one of those champions. If he gets rolling, he's really really hard to stop. Yeah, I'm not surprised by either of these two bands that uh, S10 has done. Talon, Nate is, or literally Nate, has been 
very consistent on Assassin Champions. That seems to be his preferred play style. And then up in the top lane where you have uh, literally Kamish, his Jace is just another classic that has been banned uh, season after season. But not to my surprise, uh, Akali is going to be locked in. Yeah, and that, that is... Akali being locked in. For sure, yeah. And that it can actually go into either lane, being with literally Kamish or literally Nate, as we were just talking about, uh, assassin player in the mid lane. But Kali did receive, uh, I think, I believe a few hefty nerfs on this last patch, which I don't actually have up in front of me right now. but. Um, yeah, the, uh, I don't think Akali received any nerfs on this patch. I think that's coming up in the next patch. This is the next patch, okay. Yes. Um, but the Diana lock-in, super standard, probably want to see that into an Akali if you're going to have that matchup or if they're going to save the mid-pick for later. And uh, locking in that rumble for the top lane, that is another repeat champion, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is a not. It is not a. It is a repeat champion. Uh, but now the Nocturne coming in there. So it looks like it's probably going to be Nocturne mid and a Kali top, with Nocturne being really good into melee champions such as Diana. Um, looking at both these team comps now, as we're probably going to try to get into um, the normal champ select, and we're going to run down these rosters of. Uh, each team and what the champions are going to be playing. What are your initial thoughts coming out of the draft? Well, who do you think uh, won the draft, if there is a clear winner, or do you feel like it's fairly even, based off of you think everybody got what they wanted? Um, uh, Going based just on the draft, I think the easier execute comp has to go to LTN, because with the Nami wave and the Sejuani uh, ultimate engage, you just have such very clear ways to do it, when the Season 10 engage is actually Look at a little backluster. When you have the Blitzcrank, that's your one chance. And if that Blitzcrank hook is missed, then you have options from the Diana going in, but that can be risky. And then you have options uh, from maybe a long-term uh, Rumble ult. But to get that one pick from Blitzcrank is going to be key to success. Yeah, I do think, I do happen to agree with you. It's uh, Their engage is going to be you know, it's probably going to uh, end up being Kane for getting the Rost version as there's only two range champions. And I don't, you know, foresee him being around uh, bot as much, but that can always change. Uh, I think that for LTN, as you said, they have the clearer comp. Um, they have the engage with the Sejuani. Even Nocturne can start these things off. The Press R Siver, which is a... PMA LCS standard. Um, it's just outside of Sejuani. You know, they do have one tank. Well, S10 has none. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how these fights play out. Yeah, I'm actually kind of... It, that LTN team is just a press R team. And, yeah, press R and you go. Uh, I'm just... I'm ready for a good match. I'm excited to see where they're... Uh, where their starting points are going to be. Is it going to be a standard five point or is it just going to be a little bit of like, do we get the classic PMA LCS level one invade or big scrap off? Yeah, I think, uh, well, you naturally, when you have something like a Blitzcrank, you're looking to see some type of invade to burn some flash or do something a little bit cheesy. I do think, though, that if LTN was to stack up in a bush together with the Sezwani passive uh, and having a Kali and Nocturne there, you could probably try to get something working for you there. Uh, but with that being said, it's going to be uh, interesting. I think that the L they're going to they should have push in the bottom lane. Uh, and in the mid lane as well. I think Nocturne clears really, really well, and it's going to have kill pressure on this Diana for, you know, the first couple of levels. I think Diana Brown, maybe level three, be a little bit better when she starts being able to have her uh, Q and E up at the same time with the little shield she's going to get. Or, wait, the Q? The W is still the shield. Okay, so the W is still the shield. Yeah, all right. I knew they reworked her, but I forgot which part. Um, 
it's going to be really, really interesting to see. And then that top lane matchup where Rumble can push in the Akali in the early part of the game, but at level six, that Akali, if run, if they're running Ignite, or even just a normal Akali before the buffs, can probably take down that Rumble in a long lane. Yeah. Uh, now, as we're waiting for pick, the pick and ban phase to be done through the client instead of our handy little pro draft, not sponsored. Um, sponsored by Mountain Dew. Yes, sponsored by. Um, I think a lot of this game is going to come from this Nocturne pick in the lane. Because Nocturne can be rather feast or famine. We've all been there when you've had your Nocturne on your solo queue team. You're like, Nocturne mid. Yeah, I've seen this guy. He's insane. He goes like 20, 0, and like 10. And then all of a sudden, the next game, you're like, yes, finally another Nocturne mid. And then it flops. It's all going to come down to whether literally Nate can stay consistent on this champion. If he can keep his farm up, if he can keep his items coming in and keep that gold income and just push this advantage and push the snowball, you have the team fight to back you up. You just need to go in and make coordinated plays. And I think that uh, the Nocturne ultimate, the darkness is going to be essential in team fights because you can get a clean uh, Nocturne ult, blind them for a second into Sejuani engage, and you just catch them off guard. Yeah, I do think it's going to, in the you know mid game, it's going to be where LTN really does thrive. There's no real point of the game where I feel like uh, LTN gets outscaled either. Um, it is interesting to note that both solo laners for Season 10 have taken the Teleport and the Ignite for the Blitzcrank in the bot lane, while on the side of LTN, literally Nate taking the Ignite to try to probably get that level 3 uh, or maybe even level 2 kill, depending on how everything works out. And then literally Garrett taking the exhaust, which I find a little bit interesting. Uh, not something you see as much anymore, probably to keep that Diana down if it does indeed get out of hand somehow. Um, I find it's just going to be really hard to be Freedom Penguin this game. He is their carry over the side to Season 10. And with double assassins and just press R and go, he's going to be the main focus uh, for the side of LTN to jump onto him as he is playing that coveted Aphelios. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. I feel like Freedom Penguin is kind of the the standout like star carry for this because of his his position in the draft. I believe he was one of the first to go in uh, the very first. Uh, yeah, he was the very first uh, draft pick. Yes, draft pick in the gold league. So I'm expecting a lot from him just because of the priority that was put on him, but also just like I hope that there is a slight mechanical difference here. I'm not too familiar with literally Stewart, and I hope that we just get a good match tonight. Yeah, I do agree. It's going to be a really good match tonight. Uh, let's go look in the chat and see how everyone's doing today. So we do have uh, Jewel Baka, Super Hoagie, Bowser the Harvester, Gardist. Gardist? Uh, <laughs> Gardist. <laughs> Gardist. Uh, uh, then we have Boss Tones and Necro Guy uh, in the chat. Hello, how are we all doing? Let us know. We got 40 seconds roughly left. Let us know in chat who you think is going to win. Hashtag S10 win or hashtag LTN win. Right now, reading some of this, two hoagies, heroes, players duking it out in the jungle. My two former teammates are in the jungle facing against Garrett, each other. Literally. Garrett's wifey is here. I'm super biased toward Neil, so I feel for you, Bowser the Harvest Goddess. And then Boston's talking about my grant daddy, my bung daddy, oh. and my hoagie. Uh, all three of you F me up right now, God. Um, Necker guy saying twice the dads, which is more than one, yes. Uh, then we get some LTN wins in chat. Whoever has Nocturne is going to win. Gotta go with that S10 win. I don't know the team names. I think LTN has the best comp, but S10 can be nutty if one of them pops off. There's too much Aphilios for their team. What does that even mean? You said you think Nocturne wins, but you think there's too much Aphilios. Okay, Jake, you're drunk. Oh, 
too much to screw. Up. <laughs> oh, yes. Got it. All right, you're not drunk. You're cute. All right, so looking at all these, my brain don't work. Live alone. Uh, Diana and both mid laners taking electrocute. Uh, nothing crazy here. Kane with the conqueror, which I, leads me to believe it's going to be the uh, Rost form. And then the rumble. Yeah, everything pretty standard here. Nothing weird to see here. As pause, I am not in game. We'll pause at ten. Yeah, I'm not in yet either. I accidentally paused at eleven. So. Pause All right, 11. I'm in. So pause at eleven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pause at eleven. All right, I am paused at eleven. All right. Okay. Three, two, one, start. All right, we'll just move these around. Is there are pings everywhere uh, on this map right now? Yeah, so it's looking like uh, LTN is looking for the classics uh, five point, and then uh, the uh, side of S10. They're actually looking for the invade. Not surprising with the blitzcrank. They're gonna try and catch someone out. Except you're having a late start from the red side, so they're actually not gonna spot this from S10 at all, and they're gonna get a free 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 path right in there yep. and you know it's the classic go and cheese sebastian that's a wonderful tactic i don't know who in implemented that one but yeah hey Hoagie, can you uh pull up the objective timers as well so right now you we see literally nate is about to walk into this oh he might the blitzcrank hook is going to miss oh! right there is literally nate just gonna walk out and be like well that was fun just uh, uh cut the bod cut the bod nothing happened there Oh, but they're looking again because Blitzcrank Hook has a 18 second cooldown or something. So they're just going to stand around right there as it looks like, you know, Kane can have a leashless start. So you don't know, but most likely going to be starting on these Raptors right here. Yeah, so we see a couple of question mark pings coming from the red side on the red on the top side. And they're wondering, did they stay over in this red area? And it's not going to come out that way. See the Kane starting at its normal. Uh, jungle path starting at the raptors gonna go to that red buff probably head to blue and then and then head for a gank but also the other option is that you can just go from red to so let's see where neil decides to go as everything's just gonna be a little bit standard you know having both junglers start on the bottom side of the map um obviously juiced by daddy not to be confused with juiced me daddy very interesting stuff uh with the whole juice people um, not sure I understand it, nor do I want to, um, but then, uh, you know, level twos will be hitting any soul lanes as, a uh, looks like Neil the Steel is actually looking for an invade here, starting the Raptors as, literally, Mike has spotted him out while trades are going down in the mid, right there, and it looks like, uh, he, literally, Mike was able to get the camp and uh, Neil is still just kind of wasting a little bit of time there by going for a really cheeky invade. Yeah, so I mean, it was a good attempt. He decided that he's going to clear the jungle much faster than Sejuani, and that's a very obvious thing, and try and take advantage of that. But the I don't know if it was necessarily an odd start for Sejuani to start the leash side. Like, that makes perfect sense. And then it's kind of obvious that she will be pathing up towards the Raptors. So I'm not sure about that path, but it's I'm not a jungler, so I can't tell you any better. Yeah, no, it's fine. I think it was uh, for Neil to do that. You know, he just lost a little bit of tempo. He's going to be down a full camp because of it. Did anyone else see literally Stewart's boomerang blade? Because I will not have another Ezreal game where I can't see all the visual bugs. That stuff's really tough. Also, the uh, Sivir pick, the Blitzcrank pick into the Sivir was something we didn't really talk about. As long as she has her spell shield up, it's going to be pretty hard to make any grabs happen. So you've got to be looking for this Nami here as uh, the engage coming up from literally Nate. Going to get the fear, going to get the ignite off. Mudkips has to flash. Literally Nate going to go in her tower, take a tower shot, and then the ignite's just going to be burnt for the flash of Mudkips. Yeah, good little trade happening there. Uh, so what this is telling us now is that... Hook lands from literally... Uh, from Reverence on to literally Gert, who gets ignited. They have to burn Flash and literally Stewart's heal is Flash and heal come out from Freedom Penguin. Does not secure the kill right there. As in the meanwhile, Neil the Steel was looking at getting a gank on right there. As literally Kamish is taking a lot of damage from Juice by Daddy here. And it looks like Neil the Steel, even though his early pathing was a little bit inefficient. <laughs> 
Excuse me. Bless you. And both scuttle crabs and is doing an invade once again onto the Sejuani. Yeah, so... Up, oh, yeah. Yep, flash out oh. from literally Mike right there. So the flash, maybe a little bit preemptive. There's no real damage that Neil the Steel can do at this moment with neither jungler having backed right now. As literally Kamish going to go into the shroud, going to get hit by one of the electric harpoons, does the flash, and is probably going to be taken down. No, right there. Flash is treated right there. So a lot of flashes being burnt early right now. Freedom Penguin getting a lot of damage on the literally Stewart as he spell shields the hook. That he can and there's action everywhere. Yeah, welcome to PMA LCS where everything happens and nothing happens. Um, as the bubble does land, literally Stuart gonna hit Revance right there. As Freedom Penguin is really low on mana, looks like he's just gonna push out this way to try to reset as Kane is looking right there. And in the top lane, they have just not stopped trading as we're gonna check in on some CS numbers right now. Yeah, so uh, right now, uh, top lane is leading in CS, and it's going pretty well, but I actually want to talk about the summoners traded. So right uh, a little bit earlier on, starting off with the mid lane fight, we actually got a flash burn from the Diana, so that's going to limit her mobility away when retreating. She can go into minions, but she can't really escape that way. So that's telling me that literally Mike should probably be heading over towards that mid lane to get that Nocturne rolling. And... Another fight gonna happen here, maybe. Little Kamish just kind of poking out a little bit. Both solo laners now for each team, mid and top, both have uh, access to their ultimates. Literally, Nate gonna be able to apply that semi global pressure. If he ever leaves now with level six being hit by him, it's gonna be really, really scary for the side of season 10. I hardly know her. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, this. The key to success is probably just this vision control and also understanding that Nocturne can apply an insane amount of pressure with that ultimate. And he's hit six right now, so it's online. It's it's time to go. Yep, Use Juice, that ultimate. Juice by Daddy puts out the equalizer and literally Kamish missing on that last one right there. Probably could have done it. Had to burn the ultimate. So both ult ultimates being burnt by the top laners right there. As it looks like they're going to start out this Mountain Drake uh, with Cryo in the mid lane that they feel and uh, bot lane coming over to help literally Mike right now. Yeah, having uh, I saw that Kane was back to on or Kane was backing on the ward, so that just signals that that's a free dragon for them. The blue team has no idea what's going on there and it's cleanly taken away. Nicely done by LTN. And so that's going to mean that our next dragon is the Ocean Drake right there. Um, and which means we're going to either end up with an infernal map or a cloud map and i honestly hope it's a cloud map because i like it when ultimates and everything come back off food on faster but i also know that if it's a infernal map the cane's gonna hate it because there's less walls for him to travel through my favorite thing about the new map changes is how many different warding combinations you can now do there's so much room for vision and especially in an infernal map when all of the walls just go away you need to change the game all of a sudden your vision is now going to be placed in different areas because bushes in the red side jungle is not going to be prevalent anymore because they don't exist so you need to ward different angles and different positions to make sure that your team actually gets those picks if you are the blitzcrank or if you guys are trying to team fight you need to make sure that you can set up the correct and the correct engage for you to be able to just to execute properly. It's all about execution. Yeah, and then, in, like, okay, so the Sivir does have a bug. I'm so done with that. Uh, uh, there is also, um, you know, uh, the fact that if it was the ocean map, there is a lot more bushes to ward. Right there as they are just pushing for some hooks down here as literally Nate is roaming down to this bot lane right here. Uh, but... You know, it's uh, four man in the bot side of the map, and then they're rotating up three to the top side of the map to try and play to their what they view, I guess, right now, currently the strong side of the map. Although, looking at these CS numbers right here, uh, it is uh, Neil the Steel massively out farming, literally, Mike, right now. Literally, Mike hasn't even hit level six yet, while uh, Neil still is six, as literally Nate's going to try to 
get away from this, does flash away, gets the ultimate down, has to burn the ignite, and first blood coming for Kane, but the return kill for literally Nate. So overall, a win for the side of Season 10, I hardly know her, with the first blood and a Siskold going over there. Uh, and speak of Neil the Steel and he shall appear. I, I, that's probably the best that could, the best thing that could happen for the side of LTN. If you're trading in a 1v2 situation, then you are just winning that trade every single time. They're committing so many resources to that mid lane to still lose, uh, to still lose a player. It's a well-deserved victory for the LTN mid lane right there. Yeah, having that, uh, combat summoner spell with, uh, Ignite really helpful right there but so a 30 cs lead right there in the jungle uh about a 9 cs lead in mid lane uh but that looks like they're gonna try to engage right here the flash comes out so they're split focus right now freedom penguin going down but now the ultimate comes out from nocturne he flashes away to try to kill though meanwhile reverence was trying to solo out the nami for whatever reason burns the flash right there as neil the still is here gonna try to get some more damage on some of these guys as the Di diana is here neil the still does take down one as Mudkips has come back, and the flash from Lily Stewart seals the deal on Reverence right there, as Mudkips is going to probably just be able to survive right here. Can't take anyone down, literally Nate tanks the tower shots and is on a killing spree. Meanwhile, in the top lane, a solo kill for literally Kamish onto the Rumble, as it looks like there was a lot of lack of communication, uh, so to say, from the side of Season 10, I hardly know her. Yeah, uh, that was an extremely odd time to be split in a fight because you see that Nocturne has the ability to come down and join the fight at any time, and then you have your Blitzcrank and your Aphelio splitting up. When Blitzcrank is on the Nami and he gets the flash, once you get that flash, you just need to turn on to the uh, Sivir and help your Aphelios because Aphelios is not winning that situation right there. Oh, Neil the Steel with that. the Steel! Neil the Steel with the Steel on, and uh, literally Flemish flashing away, and now Neil the Steel doing as much as he can. Ultimate comes out and he gets a double kill right here. He has 100% kill participation right now as he stole the Rift Herald from being done, went all the way over there and got it with his smite right there. I think they should probably try to break open this mid lane turret, but he's just going to continue to farm. And wow, that's a nice way to come back in to where they can have a, five, a 600 gold lead right now for the side of season 10 i hardly know her yeah tons of standard uh just standard play right now we're waiting for some more some more action love the visual bugs on sivir yes <laughs> i've just been so bothersome as they're zoning away. Oh, the hook does land on the Sivir as she's about to go down, but unfortunately does not right there. Neil the Steel doing as much. He's just bullying this Akali right now. He doesn't have his ultimate available. The Nocturne's going to come in right there, and the shutdown goes over to him as Juice by Daddy lays out the red carpet. But, oh, another root right there is literally Garrett is literally gone as literally Nate you know what? Everyone change your name. I'm just calling you by your unliteral name. I'm just going to say Stuart, Nate, Mike, Commission, Garrett. That is too much to say. Just letting y'all know. And that uh, that up in top lane, that's just that's just very arrogant play. When you know that you have uh when you're up against a Nocturne and that 1v2 can or that yeah, that 1v2 can turn into a 2v2 at any moment, you're positioning yourself in such an awkward spot because you're placing yourself in between enemy territory between the two towers. You don't want to be in that situation as the enemy team. You want to get in there, get a quick kill, and leave. You don't want to leave time for the Nocturne to be able to respond, which can respond in such a quick manner. Yeah, I do agree. And also, doing that without your ultimate as Kane, I think, is a little bit tough, as he is now starting up this dragon who, with all of his bot lane about to help, looks like he's actually going to be able to get this. I don't think there's any way that anyone can steal, but it looks like there might be a fight breaking out as the hook lands on Tsunami and Kane ults the Sejuani, has his Conqueror proc, and it's going to be a Cloud Drake right now. Literally, Nate takes down Diana, but it's going to be a three for one trade when it's all said and done. Freedom Penguin looking to clear out a pink board right here, and they do crack open the Rift Herald here now that plates have expired. It looks like it's going to be enough to take down this first tower right here. 
for the side of Season 10, I barely know her, and they do get first tower as well. So they have about a 3,000 gold lead currently. Yeah, I mean, that's just a big power move right there. You go down to the dragon, you get your dragon, and then all of a sudden the team is just collapsing into you, and they lose the fight. And then that fight translates into a free tower, so right after that, this is just going to be a big, massive swing in gold for the side of uh, S10, and they can back and spend it, and then they're going to be in a pretty good spot looking forward. Yeah, the one thing we did talk about, like how LTN's team comp is probably a little bit easier to execute. The only problem is, is if you don't have the Akali doing a lot on the backside right here, or just taking it to town onto Juiced by Daddy, who is going to unleash the red carpet right here. Nice rake right there. Literally, Kim is going to miss it right there, but the knock is going to come pick it up right now. And Kane going to try to do his best as he almost gets wow. it right there. The flash from the really Nate to try to get the fear onto him right there as Neil the Steel might be able to Q away and E away. I'm not entirely sure. And he's going to go down right there as literally Nate does in fact pick up that kill right there as reference is looking to make a play on the bot side going to flash away from Garrett right there by Nami but land that nice bubble onto the Blitzcrank. Yeah it's really nice to see that their plan, uh, the plan on LTN is taking effect in some way. So they wanted to get literally Nate ahead and then there's gonna be a little action. Nope, hook misses. So uh, Nate has been roaming. He's been pushing and roaming, pushing and roaming. And then when you can't push and roam, he's just been creating opportunities for himself. He's currently sitting at nine, two and one. And currently it, he's helping uh, up in top lane where they're getting kind of, where he's getting kind of pushed in, dove a little bit, and he's capitalizing on the over aggression of the top and jungle duo from S10. Yeah, and during that, we saw Diana have to burn her flash and two ultimates being burned. The Sejuani ultimate as well as the Sivir ultimate being burned right here. It looks like they're trying to force down this tower brute force with barely any, you know, as the Nami wave comes out, now that there are no minions and a deep TP from literally Kamish right here. Looks like they're trying to do a five-man play right here. Juice by Daddy has not answered with the TP. He put some question mark pings out. He's like, uh, by the way, guys, missing top. And they're like, yeah, we know he's in the bot lane. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit mistimed there by the side of LTN because the Nocturne oh, ultimate was not. Out and, uh, Hook also misses right there. So Freedom Penguin's ult misses wide goalpost, and the hook from Revance also does miss right there. Sorry to cut you off there, right there. So like, I almost had something really big right there. No, that's fine. Uh, as I was saying, the. Nocturnal was not exactly up at the time that the teleport was coming out, so there might have been a miscommunication of when that spell was actually going to be available. Because that fight, if it happens a couple seconds later when that darkness is up, all of a sudden the, the fight changes and you get that fight because Akali can go in unseen, you guys go and take the fight, all of a sudden that 3v2 turns into a five, or a 4v3, and yep, then... And there was a 2v1 in the mid lane with uh, literally Nate getting taken out with Neil the Steel just being everywhere. He's 8 out of 10 kill participation. He's 3 levels up against his enemy jungler. He's actually tied for the highest level. Oh, excuse me. Literally, Kamish has level 12 right now, but he's just running rampant right now on this cane. Yeah, and going back to a conversation we were having earlier about the dragons, that is just yawn snooze fest for the map changes i was hoping for something super exciting but it seems like yeah. we're gonna have another skirmish in the top lane literally Kamish just going out but diana going in 3v1 for quite some reason as juice by daddy also does a little bit of a questionable thing so the solo winners from the side of season 10 i hardly know or hardly knew that they were in a disadvantageous matchup yeah, we see a couple of pings coming out from, I believe it was, yeah, it was the red team. So literally Garrett is pinging out the dragon, which means that they're probably going to want to set up right now. So you see a reset coming in from the red team, and they're probably going to move their vision now as they're all coming in, getting set up for the dragon. You can capitalize on this back from the Blitzcrank because the dragon is going to spawn right now. And Blitzcrank stops because he knows that he can't get the back. Probably down on wards. Actually, no, he is fine. So there was no need to back there. And you just need to set up the vision now. This is going to be the fight that you want to take. They're going to fight over this dragon, and it's going to open up another opportunity. Coming out from the side of Season 10, I hardly know where to try to get some, you know, positioning on this dragon. Just using it literally for that. Uh, 
and looks like there's going to be an uncontested Drake as the rest of LTN is not available to do that. So we are two dragons away from a Dragon Soul win condition for the side of Season 10. I hardly know her. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, it felt a little bit slow from the side of LTN setting up for that dragon. They pinked it out with plenty of time. They were back in base. They could have just reset and then come and moved in as a team to establish that vision. Because this stuff doesn't happen in, like, 10, 15 seconds. You have to take about a minute. Just set it up, take it slow, move as a unit, get your vision in there. Move it step by step. You don't have to skip steps, and you can just take it slow. Move in there, establish your control, and then when you're comfortable, you pull the trigger. Yep. And I think this is the part of the game where we were starting to talk about uh, LTN's team comp and how we think it'll start to shine here as this early game up to the point, now as we transition to the mid game, has been dominated so much by better seeming macro plays from the side of uh, LTN. Uh, but here comes the engage right there. Everyone press offer and hope for the best as Diana goes right there. As Aphilius got shut down by the Nostrum, he's going to go down as well. Literally Kamish slays Juice by Daddy. And meanwhile, Neil Steel is the only person alive who can do anything right there. He does take one, a triple kill for literally Kamish. Uh, not going to be able to post that one to the page. And it's going to be a three or a four for two when it's all said and done. And there it is, Mr. Menbung, the classic R and Go. Yeah, R and Go. This is exactly what they want to do. You don't want to group against this team if you are season ten. You hardly know her. You want to find these flanks onto the back line because if you just group, they're just gonna press R and Go. It's actually, what we just said. Yeah. So I think the next thing that they should be looking for is establishing a side of the map. That is going to be strong, probably Baron, because the dragon isn't going to be up for another minute or so. I can't see the timers on this. But you want to pick a side of the map and set your pink wards there. You want to control an area so that you can control it on your own terms. When you're moving in the map, you want to make sure that you have vision of just one side because there's not enough ward coverage to cover both sides. And as you're getting through, uh, through different, uh, different places in the game, you need to make sure that can set yourself up for success. Yep, I agree. Also, uh, you can see the uh, Neil is still taking a lot of damage from Baron as the red carpet is laid out right there. Oh, the Aphilius ultimate is absolutely huge and literally Kamish is actually down. Neil is still going into literally Mike right there as now they are winning this fight right here. Huge plays coming up from the side of season 10. I hardly know we're finding the enemy team in a choke point or rumble really wants to make stuff happen. Oh, interesting flash right there. Uh, but does end up with Nami burning her flash and probably going to be a Baron starting for them. I don't know if they can do this with these health bars. Yeah, I don't think Freedom Penguin has the health bar to do it. He could do it with the uh, honey fruit plant there, but it doesn't seem like they were on the same page. So better to just leave it be and come back to it later when you know that you have an opportunity to stay. Yeah, by the way, uh, Grant, if you press the little eyeball thing in the bottom left where it says directed camera, or it's uh, the it says interface visibility. Uh, if you click oh, that, objective that, timers, that's yeah, nice. All right, yeah, you know when they you know when they first did that, what patch they did that on? No. The patch where we had PMA LCS live. Nice. Because I remember Greg, myself, and Flesh were all doing it. We were like, dude, look at this. This is awesome. So, pretty cool. All right, well, uh, back to the game, Menbung. Yeah. We got people to entertain. Neil the Steel did go over on the under over of eight kills that was presented by Jewel Baca as it looks like Mudkits might be cut out. But okay, they didn't want to pull the trigger on that with uh, Mike, Nate, and Garrett. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna keep harping on it until, until I just see it happen. I want to see them move in as a unit like they're doing right now. But establish vision. If you're going as a team of five, as a press R team, you're missing your Sejuani ult, yes, but you have your Nami ult to disengage. I want to see a more clean team fight from them, where they actually start with Sejuani ult. Nate goes in with the Sejuani, and I want to see that Nami in the back waiting for the, waiting for the. Uh, Kane to come and try and assassinate the uh, Sivir, and I want to see it disengage, and then that should be the fight, is you want to save some of your abilities for a disengage, some of them for an engage, 
and then just take it slow. You don't have to rush this right now. Yeah, I agree. Everyone's stacking up right there. Right now, the side lane and top lane is going for the side of Season 10, but in bot lane, it's pushing for the side of LTN, with mid lane priority being granted to the blue team right now. As Neil the Steel is looking to probably solo this, I foresee something horrible happening right here. They're going to hear the sound of Kane taking the dragon, and then the press R team is just going to press R. Um, you shouldn't be grouping us for when you are down your strongest member, and especially when he's the one that's like been salvaging these fights for you as all five members are top lane for LTN, and that just said, okay, well they, hey, they're all uh they're all top. We can just all go push mid and go get them, but it looks like they're looking to do a giant flank as they're gonna lose this inhibitor once Freedom Penguin actually gets here to put some DPS on it. The Nocturne's gonna press R here in just a second and jump on top if he can get vision. Sivir has burned her ultimate. Nocturne's gonna go in right there. And the- One R, two R, three R. The massive Diana ulti right there is it's actually gonna be a wipe. That's a huge wipe. Side. That could be game right off, right here. They have a mini wave in the mid lane. That's, that they could be game if they just decide to go mid. Bot lane, go mid. Juice by Daddy does have a TP as well that he can use to TP to save one of these minions right there. And it was just an over force right there. My goodness, this could be season 10 going in. The TP being used right there. Freedom Penguin living just by the skin of his teeth right there. But nice peel and mudkips and Juice by Daddy's ultimate layering right there were absolutely huge. And that's going to be the game right here at 26 minutes with a 6,000 gold lead. Season 10 wins first game. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, the re-engage on to, like, onto the Nocturne was just really nice by the Rumble. Laying down that equalizer, understanding that you have gone in and now you cannot escape. You can't get out of here because you've committed. Once these guys commit, you have to execute it cleanly, and then all of a sudden, you just can't make it through. You, you just couldn't make it happen. You guys got pushed. You guys pushed top lane, and it was not a mistake. It was just a little oddly I'll, executed. I'll say and that. Then... I don't think you need to, one, you didn't definitely need to over-invest in um, sending five top. Um, could have had just some recall to clear out the base uh, or the wave mid lane. And then I think the overforce into trying to find a pick right there is a little bit tough, because while you all can press R, if you don't get Freedom Penguin down right there, it's going to be tough. And try, again, fighting in a chokehold right there between the base and the um, jungle entrance right there where Rumble can just lay a very nice equalizer, I think, on top of three with Diana pulling them all back in. So really, really good play uh, out from Season 10 overall with some misplays by them uh, going a little bit deep in the solo lanes. And LTN had some really good moments, but in the end, I think the early advantages done by uh, Season 10, and namely uh, Neil the Steel, who we're going to get an MVP poll, hopefully. Uh, streamer. I'm making it right now. I'm making it right now. Uh, and he's going to be my vote for MVP, uh, mainly just because he had 15 out of 19 kill participation and was the richest person in the game by about 3,000. I haven't even checked the damage charge yet. I don't think he would top most of them. Um, actually Nocturne topping the damage charts. Uh, but it just, he, where where Neil was, there were good things happening, even in that mid lane fight where they lost four, but he was able to salvage two off the back end. Yeah, really solid play. It's a little bit of over-aggression, but that's not a bad thing. When you're that far ahead, you want to try and push the envelope. You want to up the tempo. So I think... Not not in a criticism way, but when you dot when you were going for a dive on the top lane or trying to pressure off that top lane, just go out there with your ultimate and then try and make the quick pick. If you can't make the quick pick, just scare them off. Let them know, hey, this is my turf, this is my top lane. Take it and just run, and then let your presence in the area kind of add pressure on its own. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, just a note. Four levels ahead of his uh, opposing jungle counterpart and Flame Horizon in the jungle. 
Um, really, really good play by Nilo Steel. It's just an unfortunate matchup for the uh, Sejuani, but picking it with the cane up was a little bit uh, questionable. As I think we're going to go to a break now, fill out the MVP poll, and we will be right back with Game 2 uh, PMA LCS uh, LTN versus Season 2. But, befo know her. but before, we, before we cut the bud, uh, Revan's, uh, Revan's uh, live is live. Uh, subscribe with Tier 1 subscription for two months. Thank you, and now we're cut the bud. 